So guys, welcome back to the channel and on today's video we are reviewing a type of shoe that is probably the most important shoe that we ever run with, the Daily Trainer. Guys, today we are reviewing the Nike Vimero 17. And Nike's made a few changes to this version of the Vimero and I think it's something you're going to want to take a look at. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get started off with those disclosures. This video is a collaboration between me and Roadrunner Sports. Now, the Vimero 17 was sent to me for the purpose of review. However, Roadrunner Sports has no editorial input into this video, and they're not going to get a chance to see this video before you do here on YouTube. So with that, let's get started off with price. The Nike Vimero 17 will cost you $160. But as of the making of this video, Roadrunner Sports has the Vimero 17 on sale for $130, making it a pretty spectacular deal. And of course, I will put a link in the show notes in case you want to pick up a pair for yourself. So let's get the ball rolling with a few specs. Vimero 17 has 39 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot for a 10 millimeter drop. Nike claims that a US men's size 10 would tip the scale at 10.5 ounces or 300.2 grams. However, in my size, a US men's size 13, it tips the scale at 12.4 ounces or 352 grams. So for me, at least in my size, this isn't the heaviest shoe I've ever run in. It's not light by any means, but it doesn't feel crazy heavy, especially for a daily trainer. Now, this is a daily trainer. It's a neutral shoe. But as far as daily trainers go, the Vimero 17 is more on the premium end of that spectrum. So if we keep it within the Nike family, the Vimero 17 is like a Pegasus, but better. And that will become more apparent in just a second when we talk more about the shoe. So when we get started at the top, we'll work our way down. Look at this heel collar. We've got a lot of padding. To me, this is very typically Nike. In fact, the aesthetic of the shoe is all very Nike, isn't it? And I don't mean the swoosh. I mean just everything, how the shoe's put together, the shape, it screams Nike. So we've got a lot of padding around this heel collar. The heel counter is very thick, giving us a good heel lockdown. Nike has included this little dorsal fin on the back. I have no idea what it is for, but I would guess it is more form rather than function. The upper is a lovely engineered mesh. Now this engineered mesh does have a little bit of structure to it, which is going to make it more rigid and make it stand up in all the strategic places. There aren't many overlays and that's because of this structured engineered net upper, but we do have an underlay coming around the toe box just to keep that off your toes. Standard reinforcement coming along the eyelet chain. You can see these middle eyelet chains right here. They're kind of like a suede loop. And the Vimero 17 does have this top eyelet in case you want to do the runner's knot give yourself a really good heel lockdown. The tongue is exactly what we'd expect on a daily trainer. It's not like super plush, but it's it's pretty plush. Now this tongue doesn't actually have a lace loop in the middle, but it is gusseted. And we do have this extra bit of padding right here in the middle where Nike has actually put the logo and the name of the shoe. And when I was putting on the shoe and before I tied the laces, I did find that this little padded piece in the middle tended to slide to the side just a little. So I had to take an extra effort to make sure the tongue was actually centered over the top of my foot. Now, once the shoe was actually tied on and locked in, I did have a good lockdown across my midfoot, but that was just something that I noticed. If I just slid my foot in and then tied the laces, I would notice the tongue would be to the side just a little. So it's going to take you like an extra second or two just to make sure that tongue is in its right place. Now, even though we do have a lot of padding around this heel collar, I think this side wall may be a little high. And I noticed a little bit of aggravation on the lateral side on both feet, but especially my right foot. And I noticed that aggravation right here, like right beneath my ankle bone. And it was that type of feeling where it kind of feels like something's rubbing or a little extra pressure. It wasn't actually rubbing. And it kind of made me think the first couple times that I went out that I had actually injured my ankle or had a little cut and the shoe was just aggravating it. But when I looked at my ankle, I had no injury. There was no cut. It was just the pressure created by the collar right on the side, right beneath my ankle bone. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, sometimes when we experience this type of thing in running shoes, it goes away after a few minutes. And that's exactly what happened with the Vimero 17. I only noticed it the second I put my foot in the shoe and I actually started running. After a few minutes, it went away and I didn't actually notice it moving forward. But the next day when I put the shoe on, I immediately noticed that feeling of a little extra pressure here on the side. So perhaps if you have sensitive ankles. You might want to wear the Vimero 17 around the house just to test it out walking around before you take it out for a run. Okay, coming down to the midsole. Now, this is a pretty big change for the Vimero 17. So on the Vimero 16, Nike had a Zoom X core. On the Vimero 17, we have a full top layer of Zoom X foam. And this is what makes the shoe stand out to me. Now, it's not all Zoom X. We do have that top layer of Zoom X. And then on the bottom, we have a layer of Cushlon 3.0. And ultimately, Nike has done the Zoom X Cushlon dual density midsole blend for the same reason that every other shoe company does it. That softer, responsive midsole foam on the top gives a nice step-in feel. And then that firmer foam on the bottom just gives a little extra support and actually adds as a little bit of a reinforcement to the softer foam on top. It's the same way that shoes with a full midsole of Piba foam often have a plate inside. And that plate isn't just to give it that speedy pop that we're looking for. It's to give it a little bit of structure, a little bit of rigidity. And that's exactly what the Cushlon foam does for the Zoom X. So when you put your foot into the Vimero 17, it does exactly as it should with the Zoom X. It feels fantastic 
stick on your foot. As soon as you start running, you can feel the zoom out. You can feel that soft touchdown. And then when you roll through your gait cycle, that firmer cushion gives it just a touch of firmness, which translates to a very, well, I don't want to say very, but translates to a poppy feel. It's actually a very pleasant ride. Now if we come down to the outsole, this is definitely in the daily trainer range. We have a lot of outsole rubber coverage, kind of a perimeter of rubber around the back. And then we've got a flex groove running right up the middle and then running horizontally right here. And that just gives it a little flex. And the shoe is not particularly stiff, but we wouldn't expect it to be that stiff without a plate inside. And I think this flexibility in the midsole foam adds to the feeling when I'm running that the Romero 17, it's very traditional feeling. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing necessarily, but that's just what came to mind when I was running in it. Seems like a more traditional ride, been updated with modern technologies like Zoom X foam. Now we do have this heel bevel right on the back and you can see that it is very centered and this is gonna make for a very comfortable landing if you're a heel striker. And then if we look at the front, we can see that rocker is quite late in the shoe. And again, I think that is also contributing to a very traditional feel. Now, this is a daily trainer and normally a daily trainer is going to be best suited for those daily Daily miles, all right, that's obvious. And our daily miles are fairly easy miles. And easy miles are where this shoe is going to excel. But I think the reason that most people are gonna buy the Vimera 17 is because of how it acts at all different paces. So in my testing of the Vimera 17, I took it out on a tempo run, I ran intervals, I ran several easy runs. And I've gotta say, usually when I'm running in a daily trainer, I'm not always gonna be doing workouts in them. But I got this shoe the day before I was due to do a tempo run, so it just seemed to make sense that I take this out for the tempo run. Guys, I gotta say, the shoe felt really good when I was picking up the pace. And even though my pair weighs 352 grams, it really didn't seem like that when it was on my foot and I was trying to maintain that fast turnover. Now, again, don't get me wrong, this isn't a race day shoe. You're probably not gonna take this out on race day if you have other options. And by other options, I mean lighter options or more poppy options, maybe something with a plate, but you could. We all need a daily trainer in our rotation and this definitely fits the bill. So if you're going out for an easy run and perhaps you are picking up the last couple miles of a long run to marathon pace, think the Romero 17, it's going to suit you well. But also at the end of our easy runs, sometimes we like to really pick up the pace to 5k pace during our strides. And the Romero 17 doesn't feel like you're dragging around a bag of bricks. I was actually very pleased with how this shoe felt when I started picking up the pace a little. As far as wear goes, guys, this is looking it's fairly remarkable. I mean, I'd have to get a microscope out to actually see the damage that I was doing to the outsole rub. Maybe I can see a little bit of wear here on the back edge where I generally touch down first on my lateral heel. Absolutely nothing on the forefoot really to speak of. So yeah, if you wanted to keep this shoe for a long time, this is going to be four, 500 mile shoe, it looks like to me. Other little things, the laces had no issues with the laces. I always double knot my laces when I go out for a run. They didn't come untied. We do have a removal sock liner just in case you needed to replace that with orthotics or you like custom inserts in your shoe. And I think I said this, but the Vimera 17 does fit true to size. It's a US men's size 13. That is the size that I usually wear in Nike shoes. To me, it seemed like I had plenty of room in the toe box. However, Nikes traditionally run a little narrow and I do have narrow feet. So perhaps if you have really wide feet, that might not be the best idea for you. But if you do have skinny and long feet, the Vimera 17 is really gonna be in your wheelhouse because I did notice that it seemed quite long. Now, I still stand by that the shoe fits true to size. I didn't notice any negatives from it being a little long, but when I felt my toe right here at the end, I definitely had a full thumbs width between the end of my big toe and the end of the shoe. But because when I did this, when I did the old thumb check, I had already run over 50K in the shoe. I didn't really think twice about it because the shoe felt good when I was on the run. And really when it comes down to it, comfort is how we gauge fit. So if it feels comfortable, you're on the right track. Let's just come back down to the midsole for a second. Another update that Nike has made is they've removed the air zoom unit from the forefoot. Last year they had it, this year they don't. And if you're wondering about the durometer readings on the Vimero 17, let me just get my durometer right here. Let's do the Cushlon 3.0 first. Let me take several readings, 30, 31 for the Zoom X, 36 to 37 for the Cushlon 3.0. So guys, I wanna know what you think. Look, there are a lot of reasons why some people won't like this shoe. If you're not a Nike fan, you're automatically gonna disregard this shoe. If you don't like a 10 millimeter drop, again, you're gonna be pushing the shoe out of the way. But 
when it comes down to it, the Nike Vimera 17 is going to work for a lot of people. And because of its price, especially $130 at Roadrunner Sports, and the durability with this massive high abrasion rubber on the outsole, the Vimera 17 is probably going to last you a long time. Oh, earlier on I did say that it's like the Pegasus, but better, and I totally stand by that. The Pegasus with its React foam, to me is just a tad firm. I do like something just a little softer, and this Zoom X in the top really just punches my ticket. And generally I like softer shoes, but not too soft. I mean, I'm very picky, but I particularly like this blend of Zoom X and Cushlon. I think they work well together. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're thinking about picking up a pair of the Romero 17, or if you run in another daily trainer, let me know what that is. All right, guys, it's Matt B. This has been my review of the Nike Romero 17. Be kind, be happy, run well. See you in a couple of days. Mm -hmm.